All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to start off by giving all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, better known as GMS, who will well. Peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect. And for the second try, because I did a whole 50 minute video the first time, only to find out only 12 minutes of the video was recorded. <laughs> but anyway, let's get straight to it. So, this is an addition called um, going to the comment board. And one of the Aquath left the comment. And uh, her comment was Can you break down Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis, please? What I thought I read is different from conversations I've had with other people that believe they were talking about children and about men sleeping with men. So this is what this lesson is going to be dedicated to. So without further ado, let's waste no time. Let's get into it. So we're going to start in the book of Genesis chapter 13, dealing with the separation between Abraham and his nephew Lot, because there was a lot of uh, tension going on between both of their herdsmen not having enough space. All right. <clears throat> and um, we'll start at verse uh, 10, Genesis 13 and 10. It says, and Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan that was well watered everywhere before the Lord. Yahweh destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of Yahweh, like the land of Egypt, as though as thou comest unto Zorah. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan and Lot journeyed east and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. So for those of you who don't know, Abraham was up here somewhere and the area of Sodom and Gomorrah was down here. So this is where Lot ended up pitching his tent. All right. Um, so going back now, let's jump over to Genesis, the 19th chapter, and we're going to read the story, okay, dealing with the Sodomitish men and their wicked behavior. And then as we're reading the story, I'm going to give you guys a visual because I have a video pulled up here so you guys can see it visually of what was going on. This is Genesis chapter 19, and we have to go through this bit because you have to get the backstory in order for me to give out the rest of the uh, history of what was really going on within that land, all right? So Genesis chapter 19, and we're going to start at verse 5. It said, actually, we'll start at verse 4. It says, but before they lay down, meaning uh, Lot and everybody in his household, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round about, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. All right. And this is what they did. This is the men of Sodom charging through the house of Lot, because when you go back at the top of the um, the chapter, it says in verse one, and there came two angels to Sodom at even and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom and Lot seeing them rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, behold, now my lords turn in, I pray you into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet. And ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, nay, but we will abide in the street all night. So these are the two men who were actual angels. OK, because remember, the scriptures talk about that. We entertain angels unawares. That's in a book of Hebrews. Right. So Lot didn't know that they were angels of the heavenly father of the uh, of the heavenly host. OK, which is another important fact that you always have to be careful of who, you know, what you say or what you do around people because you could be entertaining an angel, all right? But just to get back to the point, so the two men that these, uh, all right, these um, sodomites that were coming out after, they were coming after the angels that Lot ended up taking it into his household. So let's continue to read. It says, verse um, five, and they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Okay. Now, what does it mean to know them? Meaning that they want to have sex uh, with them. And can we prove that? Absolutely. Let's grab another precept. Let's get Genesis chapter four. Okay. In verse one, it says, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain. In other words, to know someone is to have sex with them. 
Okay. That's what it's talking about. So in this case, what the men in the city of Sodom wanted to do, they wanted Lot to turn over, okay, those two uh, angels so that they can have their way with them. Verse six, it says, and Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. All right. So going back into the film, and I'm only doing these still shots because if I play the video, it'll be copyright. So this is Lot. This is one of the angels, right? But this is Lot. You see, he's trying to hold on to the door because they're trying to charge in and grab the two men. Okay. And it says, verse eight, behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and, and do ye to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing, for therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. So in other words, Lot is saying, look, I got two daughters. I'll give y'all them in an exchange, and y'all can do whatever y'all want to do with them. Have your way with them, but just don't do anything to these men, okay? Because it's a wicked act. Verse 9, and they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will need to be a judge now Will we deal worse with thee than with the, uh, with them? And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot in, uh, into the house to them and shut the door. So by this time, fast forward because there's Lot's wife and the, uh, the two daughters, right? So here it is. Lot comes out to confront them. He opens this door. Now, he's coming out the door to confront them. And let's see if I can take this back. Here are the two angels, okay, depicted within this movie. They, under their robes, they have on these garments. Now, as Lot is standing in the door confronting these Sodomites men, because they're trying to, you know, go after them, right? This next scene... They start to take their robes off because they about to get busy. All right. Remember, Sodom and Gomorrah is about to get judged. That's the whole reason why they came in to deliver Lot and they was going to judge the city. So now that they've manifested themselves, they start to walk towards the door to meet the men out that were, uh, you know, going at it with Lot. So let's go back to the story. Get some more scriptures. Genesis chapter 19. Okay. Verse 11, it says, and they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. Those men that smote them was talking about the angels. And here's the scene on how they did it. The angel came out. Right. And as he came out. Let's see if I can get it. He looked up. OK, to the heavenly host. And the moment he looked up. See, they started to laugh and giggle because they they're thinking to themselves, it's just two of y'all. Y'all outnumbered. We're going we're going to get them buttocks. Right. Long story short. Angels starts to look down on them. All right. Spiritual powers come and they started bleeding from their eyes. They were smoked with blindness. All right. You see that. They hold in their eyes. They're in severe pain. OK. The angels uh, work the mighty work. OK. Now, verse 12, it says, and the men said unto Lot, meaning the angels, hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city? Bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of Yahweh, and Yahweh hath sent us to destroy it. Okay. So fast forward. Um. Verse 15, it says, and when the morning arose, then the angels uh, hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of the city. So at this point, fast forwarding, the angels, okay, they defend Lot to try to get him out of the city. Okay, they start fighting these Sodomitish men. Okay, there's Lot, his wife, and the two girls. All right. Now, when you get to the uh, end, close to the end of the scene, here they're making their way out, okay? And now the Heavenly Father starts to bring the rain of the fire. 
Okay? Which is the next part. Verse 17, and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain, escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. So in this part right here, this is when the angel said that to, um, to Lot and his family. But the key thing within the verse was they told him as the city is being destroyed, don't look back. Right. But who looked back? Say right here. <clears throat> it says, verse 24, then the Lord Yahweh reigned upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and that which grew upon the ground. OK. And as you can see in the background, let's see if I can get a better shot. The fire is, is, is destroying Sodom and Gomorrah, man. Right. But what about here? Verse 26. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. OK. And that scene of her being a pillar of salt. OK. Is right there. She looked back. High ass didn't listen. Right. So now we have to get some understanding as what what sort of wickedness within those cities of Sodom and Gomorrah was taking place. Well, first off, let's look up the word. Um, sodomite, right? Which is Strong's H sixty nine forty five, Kadesh, Kadesh, and it says here a male temple prostitute. Okay, it says sacred person, i.e., technically a male devotee by prostitution to licentious idolatry, sodomite, unclean. Now, if you go one step further. Sometimes you have to look out, look up words outside the scripture to get a better understanding. Licentious is promiscuous and unprincipled in sexual matters. OK. Impure, sinful, wicked, corrupt. OK. Lustful. All right. You get the picture. So when we have a read down here in the Jacinius Hebrew Chaldee lexicon, it says a sodomite. Consecrated, SC, to Astarte or Venus and prostituting himself in her honor. And why is that? Because during the time within that region, OK, the uh, Sodomites, they were actually worshiping the God of Astarte. OK, which is the same person as uh, Semiramis going all the way back to the Tower of Babel. OK, you had Semiramis and her, uh, which was her son, Nimrod. OK. Astarte represented Semiramis and then the other God that they worship, which was Baal. OK, represented Nimrod. OK, and in honor of worshiping Astarte, they will commit certain sexual immorality acts. OK, which we want to grab in this article I have lined up here. But first, before we do that, a little bit of uh, information on Astarte. And this is from uh, Britannica.com. So you can look this up on your own. OK. But it says Astarte also spelled Athart uh, or Ashtart, great goddess of ancient Middle East and chief deity of Tyre, Sidon. OK, which are sons of Ham. OK, your uh, so-called Africans. OK, important Mediterranean seaports. Hebrew scholars now feel that the goddess Ashtoreth mentioned so often in the Bible is deliberate co uh, conflation. Of the Greek name Astarte and the Hebrew word Bashat, which means shame, indicating the Hebrews' contempt for her cult, Ashtoreth, the plural form of goddess, goddess's name in Hebrew became a general term denoting goddesses and paganism. You see that? Now it goes on to give you the history with King Solomon, okay, which he sinned by setting up groves and altars for that particular uh, goddess from the Zidonians. OK, and also she was known as the queen of heaven to whom the Canaanites burnt offerings and poured uh, libations. You can get that in Jeremiah, the 44th chapter. OK, they were baking cakes for the queen of heaven, just like how y'all do on Easter and stuff. Your your grandmama will sit up there and she'll be cooking all night, night long the day before making that ham roast and all of that baking cakes and stuff. So your monkey behind can go to the church house and then come home and eat some of that good eating on Easter Sunday. Yeah, 
Same thing that's going on here. That's why the scripture says was um, there is no new thing under the sun. Right. But it says here, a star day goddess of war and sexual love. You see that shared so many qualities with her sister Anath that they may originally have been seen as a single deity. Their names together are the basis for the Aramaic goddess Atargistus. All right. It says Astarte was worshipped in Egypt and Ugarit and among the Hittites, as well as in Canaan. OK, her Akkadian counterpart was Ishtar because she's not only named Astarte or Asherah, but she's also known as Ishtar or the modern day name that you guys will know her today is Easter. OK, so on Easter uh, Sunday, when you guys celebrate that wicked holiday, you're not celebrating the uh the resurrection of so-called Jesus Christ. You're actually venerating the God of Ishtar or Astarte, believe it or not, when you look it up. It says later she became assimilated with the Egyptian deities Isis and Hathar. Okay, because the Egyptians during their time, they also worshipped her, but they didn't call her Astarte. Her name was Isis, a, a goddess of the sky and of women. And in Greco-Roman world, okay, she was known as Aphrodite or Artemis or Juno. All right. So now that you got that, <clears throat> I got a little information here dealing with the cultic practices uh, that they were practicing. Okay. These uh, people within Sodom and Gomorrah or just the overall nation of Canaan. It says, but all worshipers appeased him by offering sacrifices, usually animals such as sheep or bulls. Some scholars believe that the Canaanites also sacrificed pigs and that God prohibited his people from eating pork in part to prevent this horrible cult from being established among them. OK, and then gives you the precepts. It says at times of crisis, Baal's worship uh, or followers, Salakia, sacrificed their children, apparently the firstborn of the community to gain personal prosperity. It says the Bible called this practice detestable and it gives you precepts. It says God specifically appointed the tribe of Levi as his special servants and place of the firstborn of the Israelites. So they had no excuse for offering their children. The Bible's repeated condemnation of child sacrifice shows God's hate, hated of uh, hated of it or hatred of it, especially among his people. It says Asherah which is also another abbreviation or not so not so like not abbreviation, but another way you can say her name was worshiped in various ways, including through ritual sex. OK, Sotomitis, Sotomitis, although she was believed to be Baal's mother, she was also his mistress. OK, and when you get the story of Semiramis and Nimrod, OK, um, the same story or account is uh, mentioned when you read up about Semiramis and Nimrod because they're the same people. It says pagans practice sympathetic magic. That is, they believe they can influence the God's actions by performing the behavior they wish the gods to demonstrate. Believing the sexual union of Baal and Asherah produced fertility, their worshipers engaged in immoral sex because when you understand Asherah was actually the mother of Baal, Semiramis was the mother of Nimrod. But in the story, she says that she she came down as the moon goddess and she she got impregnated by her son, which Nimrod represents the the rays of the sun. OK, so that was a form of Im, uh, immorality of telling the people that they they sh in order to reverence her, they will have to commit such acts. OK, so it says their worshipers engage in Im, Im, uh Immoral sex to cause the gods to join together, ensuring good harvest. This practice became the basis for religious prostitution. The priest or a male member of the community represented Baal. The priestess or a female members of the community represented Asherah. In this way, God's incredible gift of sexuality was perverted to the most obscene public prostitution. No wonder God's anger burned against his people and their leaders. Right. Because eventually when we got around those nations, we started going off and committing such acts. OK, so just to give you an example, let's go to Leviticus, the 18th chapter. 
because we had laws. Now, the title of it says laws on immoral relations. Now, let's have a read. It says, and Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am Yahweh, your power. After the doings of the land of Egypt, because Egyptians were practicing such wicked acts, wherein ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, you see that? Whither I bring you, shall ye not do, neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. Now, when you read this whole chapter, it goes into those ordinances that these um, Hamitic uh, nations actually practice. And one of the biggest one of them was incest amongst their own family members, neck closest to their kin. Bestiality. OK, verse 22, thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. OK, homosexuality. OK. This is the reason why the Heavenly Father, OK, told us he gave us the blueprint of what not to do, but we didn't listen. We started doing those wicked acts. OK. So going back, let's get a. Uh, Let's get the blue letter. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 12. We're going to start at verse three. It says, for it was thy will to destroy by the hands of our fathers, both those old inhabitants of the Holy Land. Now, who was the old inhabitants of the Holy Land before we came into it? Let's get Deuteronomy, chapter seven. And starting at verse one, it says, when the Lord, Yahweh, thy power shall bring thee into the land, whither thou goest to possess it and have cast out many nations before thee. The Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou, okay? Those nations that were in that land all go back to Ham, okay? They're Hamitic tribes, the so-called Africans. And when the Lord, Yahweh, thy power shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. OK. And it tells you why when we go back and read Wisdom of Solomon, the 12th chapter. It says, now we know who those old inhabitants of thy holy land were. Now it says, whom, meaning those Canaanites, thou hatest for doing most odious works of witchcrafts, wicked sacrifices, and also those merciless murders of children and devourers of man's flesh. In other words, sodomite. The practice of sodomite, okay? And the feast of blood with their priest out of the midst of their idolatrous crew. Because remember, we read they had right here the priest or a male member of the community represented by all, okay? Which is one of the deities that they worship in Sodom and Gomorrah, okay? It says, with their priest out of the midst of their idolatrous crew and the parents that killed. With their own hands, souls destitute of help, that the land which thou esteemest above all other might receive a worthy colony of God's children. Right. Because we were promised through our forefather Abraham that we was going to inherit that land. It says, nevertheless, even those that spared us as men and did since wasp forewarners of thine uh, host to destroy them by little and little. Not that thou wast unable to bring the ungodly under the hand of the righteous in battle or to destroy them at once with cruel beasts or with uh, one rough uh, word, but executing thy judgments upon them little by little, thou gavest them place of repentance, not being ignorant that they were a naughty generation. OK, and that their malice was bred in them and that their cogitation would never change. Why? For it was a cursed seed from the beginning. Who is this talking about? Well, it's talking about the Canaanites. How do we know? Go back to Genesis, the uh, ninth chapter. Genesis chapter nine. And we're going to start at verse 20. And let's read how they became a cursed seed. It says that Noah began to be a husbandman and he planted a vineyard. And he drank the wine and was drunken and he was uncovered with the, within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brethren without. 
And Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not. Salakia. And they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and he knew what his younger brother uh, Salaki, he knew what his younger son had done unto him. And here's the point, verse 25. And he said, cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brethren. Because it started with him, him uncovered his father's nakedness. Now, what does it say in the law? Let's go back to Leviticus, the 18th chapter. And Lord's will, this lesson is edifying. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 6. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am Yahweh. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. You see that? And because Ham uncovered his father's na uh, nakedness, he was cursed through the seed through the seed of his son Canaan. So when you go back to Wisdom of Solomon, the 12th chapter, Okay, that's why it says in verse 11, for it was a cursed seed from the beginning. Neither didst thou for fear of any man give them pardon for those things wherein they sin. Okay, so they were just going off. They were just being wicked and abominable. All right. So now let's go to second Peter chapter 10. All right. And we'll start at verse nine. It says the Lord knoweth how to deliver the, un the uh, godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the uh, day of judgment and to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government presumptuous are they self will. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Why? Because the same people, even today that practice sodomite. Okay. Uh, the alphabet, Communities going out, speaking evil, saying that, you know, it's all love. We need to just love one another. Come do as thou wilt. OK, all of that for the sake of speaking evil, because they think that it's right within their own minds. Right. It says, whereas angels, which are greater in power and might bring not really accusation against them before the Lord. But these as natural brute beast made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not. Okay. Because these people out here that's talking about all oh, let a person be what they want to be. It's all love. All lives matter. Okay. You sh you can love anybody who you want. They even telling you now on Ted talks that a person that um, practices in pedophilia, that is okay. And that they should embrace it. Go and look that up. This is what it means to that. They have no understanding of the evil Wicked, abominable things that come out of their mouths. It says, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. This is why you see they go out there, talk about all lives matter, the alphabet community. They're marching in the streets. Uh, look at the whole Roe versus Wade with the abortions. My body, my right. All of that nonsense. Right. It says spots. They are with blemishes, sporting themselves with their uh, own deceivings while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls and heart. They have exercised without covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balim, the son of uh, Basur, who love the wages of unrighteousness. OK, that's why it tells you. And Romans, let's grab Romans chapter one. Start at verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible power into an image made like to corruptible men and to birds and four footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, the Most High also gave them up to uncleanness. Now, when you look at that word uncleanness, right? Strong's G-167, Akatharsia, Akatharsia. Uncleanness, 
in a physical state, in a moral sense, the impurity of lustful, luxurious, prolific living. Okay. And what can be more of a luxurious, prolific uh, living by means of sexual immorality? Okay. When you go further into the words, because some of y'all be like, that's not what it said there. Well, go and look up the words and it'll go back to that. Okay. So it says, wherefore, the most high also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of the most high into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is uh, blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, the most high gave them up unto vile affections. That's why you have certain diseases like AIDS, HIV, different sexual transmitted diseases, right? For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, lesbianism. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burnt in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. So that's why the Most High gets on a lot of people, okay, that practice sod uh, sodomite, okay, those, uh, a lot of people will sit up there and they'll, they'll either die a horrible sexual transmitted disease type of death, okay, or they'll have some sort of illness or whatever, because that's the Lord's way of judging them. It says, and even as they did not like to retain the most high in their knowledge, the most high gave them over to a reprobate mind. That's why you have a lot of our people that can't get out of that mindset because the heavenly father, okay, has pretty much given them a state of mind to where their mind has been completely sealed. They're fixated on thinking that this is the right thing to do when it's not. And the scriptures tells you that the, the that the deceive and the deceiver are his. So if he wants you to be deceived and if he doesn't want you to have the truth, he's going to give you over to a reprobate mind. And that is the worst thing to be in, man. It says here, the most high gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers. Let's look up that word fornication. Strong's G 4202. Parnaya. Parnaya. And it says here, illicit sexual intercourse, adultery, fornication, homosexuality, lesbianism, intercourse with animals, all to the which you can find. It also says sexual intercourse with close relatives, which they would call what? Incest. And where do we find all of these? In the law. Going back to Leviticus, the 18th chapter. Once again, when you read verse three, it says what? After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dwelt, ye shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Why? Because those nations were committing such abominable acts. And what happened when we joined unto those nations, we started to go off and we started to commit those same abominations. Sexual intercourse with a divorced man or woman. Metaphorically speaking, the worship of idols of the defilement of idolatry as incurred by eating the sacrifices offered to idols. And one of the idols that they commemorated and venerated to do such abominable acts was what we read was what? Astarte, Ashtoreth, and Baal. You see that? They go hand in hand. You can't make this up, man. So going back, all right, what else? It says, verse 30, backbiters, haters of the most high, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural effect, affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of the most high, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only to do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And you got people right now that's in that spirit that they have pleasure in just doing those wicked, abominable things. Now, 
when you grab, let's see here. Let's grab 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. It tells you, verse 9, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, which everything we read of these goes back to the law. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Now, when you look up fornicators within this context of this uh, scripture here, it's a different word. Strong's G, 4205. Parnas. Parnas. Which goes back to uh, uh, Kodat, Kodesh, or Kadash. No, not Kadash, Salaki, Kadesh, which was the, the word we looked up for um, Sodomite, right? Which it was, again, a male temple prostitute, where this time, when you look up fornicator, a man who prostitutes his body to another's lust for hire, a male prostitute, a man who indulges in unlawful sexual intercourse, a fornicator. OK, a whoremonger. And this is what they were doing. All right. in Sodom and Gomorrah. OK, those was one of the main abominable acts that they were doing, man. OK, so let's close it up. Let's get one more precept in the book of Jude. And uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Was it Jude or was it Salakia? Yep. This is uh, Jude chapter one, verse seven. It says, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, which we now have the understanding of what that is, and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So in other words, what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh did to those cities, okay, is what he's coming to do on a whole greater scale to America, Babylon the Great, okay, because America is doing just as much of the of the filth of what Sodom and Gomorrah uh, has done in the past. Okay, so that's pretty much on that. In conclusion, okay, yes, it was dealing with the 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 acts of um, homosexuality, the men sleeping with other men, and as you saw, okay, in this film that I depicted on how they came to Lot because they wanted to know the two men that Lot was holding. They, in other words, they wanted to, you know, do the nasty, nasty with them. OK. All right. And then also we read on how, you know, going into secular history. All right. They they not only did sexual immoral, uh, immorality, but they also was sacrificing their children. And if and if you want to understand. The uh, the sacrifice that they were doing. When you look up uh, images. This was the God, the deity that they were sacrificing their child. OK, they will go. They will go up, hand the child over around here will be an opening to where the child will drop into the this little pit. And this pit will uh, be a, a burning sacrifice area where the children's were uh, will be sacrificed through fire. OK, so, you know, this is the deity that they were worshiping in the land. Now, when you get. Um, Astarte This is a sacrifice Astarte Okay This is how she was depicted Okay Naked Showing her breast Here's another image here Right And remember She was the goddess of love And sexual immorality Alright And it tells us that In order for um, The people in that land for them to get a blessing, they felt compelled were well, not compelled, but they felt that they had to commit such acts so that they can get a blessing. And this is the reason why the Heavenly Father told us to stay away from them and don't take after the mannerisms of what they do. Jeremiah chapter 10 and 2, learn not the way of the heathen. 
All right, there's another picture. Okay, now you can see what was going on, man, back then. This is this is what this is how they was getting down, and this is how they still getting down today, just on a greater scale. Why you think that they be, um, especially with our women, the daughter of Zion? Okay, artists like Beyonce, uh, Megan The Stallion, Cardi B. Okay, Iggy Azalea. All right, every time they go on stage, they represent the divine femininity of Astarte or Semiramis. That's why they be dressing the way that they be dressing on stage. Okay, through the midst of Hollywood. Okay. So that's all I wanted to get on that. Yahweh Ratazah, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. Until the next time, Shalom.